if you're new to the channel please be sure to like share and of course subscribe and leave a comment down below and also check out our partners nerds in the hood down in the description and i hope to see you later on peace out Hey you guys and welcome to another alternative factuals video now this is the secret origin of t'challa aka the black panther now remember a lot of wakanda's history has always kept itself isolated from western societies throughout the story we will see how the world first learned about the nation of wakanda and kind of develop a relationship for the nation of wakanda as well starting off with the first few pages we actually get a narration that we later seem to identify as king t'chaka's wife niami the former queen of wakanda the story starts off with King T'Chaka's father, Azuri. Now, Azuri is holding Captain America by his throat. Now, we can make an educated guess here that during this point in time, that this is before Captain America got his official shield during World War II. Captain America stumbles upon Wakanda seeking help to fight Hydra and kind of wanting to help them initiate some movements in order for them to permanently eliminate Hydra from the Earth at least in the most humane way possible. Now, Niami is telling us that Azuri actually over time had respect for Captain America and what he represented for his people. According to Niambi, both Azura and Captain America both were blessed and burdened with great responsibility by their people. Now, Azuri also came to the realization that the Western world had developed a serum that could make Captain America his physical equal or has already made Captain America his physical equal by the small skirmish that they actually involved themselves in, at least in this point in time. But quickly after this little small little skirmish battle, Hydra made its first attempt to invade Wakanda, at least for their advanced tech and their room and vibranium substance. Now during this point in time, Missouri, the current Black Panther and Captain America become allies in order to fight this threat. They make quick work of them with barely any fatalities or damage to Wakanda. Now what we've seen in comics is the reason why Captain America has always had a pretty decent relationship with Wakanda, or at least like I said in the comic books, it's because he didn't arrive there with selfish intentions and in most cases Captain America was never selfish except for the recent secret empire which i did not really enjoy that much but that's a whole nother rant for a whole nother day but he stayed there for a short period of time actually grew to appreciate wakanda for what it was and didn't seek to make it civilized like some other people sought to do with wakanda since it wasn't a nation that they fit well felt fit the western standards Azuri respected Captain America so much that he actually entrusted him with the pound of their most precious substance, the vibranium. Now, of course, the tribe council didn't agree with all this because, like I said, Wakanda was a very isolated society. But Azuri didn't really care because he grew to trust Captain America and his morals and what he sought to achieve in the world. Now, we get a little time jump during the rule of T'Chaka, a.k.a. T'Challa's father. And we pick up with him laying some smooth game and trying to scoop up T'Challa's mother, Niami. Now, remember, he fell in love with her because of her brilliant mind regarding technology and her will to improve Wakanda using the Great Mound's gift, aka the huge stockpile of vibranium that they got stashed underground. She was not actually a traditional queen due to the fact that she did not come from a lineage of people who lived inside the Golden City. Basically, she was a regular citizen of Wakanda, and most people were a little weary of her, but she was loved because of how strong she was and how little other people's opinions seemed to have mattered to her in the first place. Now, before they get married, they have to kind of get this approval or blessing from the god Bast. Now, remember, the god Bast is kind of partially responsible for some of the abilities that Black Panther is currently getting in his kind of rule as the king of Wakanda. Now, the god Bass actually came to appreciate her so much that not only did they approve of the marriage, but due to her constant improvement of Wakandan culture, they actually came to respect her. And over the years, you know, they actually appreciated and blessed the marriage in multiple ways. Now, after a few years of them being married, it seemed like she was actually struggling to have children for a bit. And the elders were very worried that she wouldn't really be able to do her wife at, well, her wifely duties. But one day, she actually did get pregnant. And lo and behold, welcome to Chala. Now, like all good stories, of course, this kind of peace or so to speak would not last very long. So, of course, Hydra comes back and try and take the vibranium. But this time, they seem to have learned their lesson from the last encounter they had with Wakanda and developed disruptors for their shields and weaponry. Despite that, the Wakandans still smoke Hydra, I mean smoke them, with the tech that was created by Niami and for the most part they prevailed. Now during this point in time, it seems like Niami falls sick to an autoimmune disease that currently doesn't have a cure. This causes T'Chaka to kind of reach out towards Howard Stark because he is well aware of Howard Stark and how intelligent he is when it comes to the western world. After he seems to reach out, they develop this form of agreement hoping that he can help her and hopefully they can actually get a hold of a pound of the vibranium on Howard Stark end. Now remember, Stark has been trying to find this place for a long time 
after Captain America got back with a pound of vibranium after that whole Hydra situation. And Captain America kept his word and never ever told him where he got it from or how to get it. So we actually skipped to a week after Niyami gives birth and very unfortunately we found out she passed away giving, well not giving birth, but she passed away. Now only this happens and of course leaving T'Chaka with his son T'Challa and he's kind of still grieving but his only happiness seems to come from his son T'Challa knowing that what he will become when he gets older. Now we fast forward a few years and we see T'Chaka and T'Challa walking in the woods showing that his son, well showing his son about his birthright, him being a king. Now this is maybe about like when he's like six or seven years old, maybe eight. Now T'Challa gets lost and a commoner finds him. Her name was Ramonda. Now if that name rings a bell, that's obviously from the Black Panther movie, aka T'Challa's mother. But there's going to be a little, not really a twist, like if you've been reading comics, you would already know this, but this is for people who are coming from the Black Panther movie. Now we know Ramonda is the woman who raised the child despite his mother being Niami, but it's clear that in the story the narration was taken over by Ramonda once she enters into their lives. Now given some time after they've kind of met, T'Chaka falls in love with her and then eventually marries her into the royal family, thus becoming one big family. Now it's very clear that T'Chaka doesn't really want to marry someone who's already had the experience of being close to the royal family because their perspective is very different because they've been at the bottom of the totem pole, so to speak, and know how to satisfy the people and values their their opinion as well as most of the women who are lower on the totem pole tend to be a lot stronger at least in this particular case as a wife but of course things never stay calm in wakanda for too long so shortly after the marriage maybe a few days or weeks they don't really say ulysses claw comes to literally take the vibranium i mean literally this is a line he says exactly from the panel i am here to petition the black panther for mining rights to the metal called vibranium basically he's here to steal something that doesn't belong to him but of course he feels entitled to it why not i, I like literally it's another rant for another day now this draws out a lot of parallels to slavery and the Europeans feeling entitled to the unknown world, which caused the whole transatlantic slave trade coming to, you know, the mixed races of, you know, Hispanic, black, islanders, all that stuff. But like I said, this is not a history lesson, but little things for you to notice. Now, at the end of the battle, T'Challa ends up shooting off Claw's arm after he kills his father T'Chaka, officially making him the new king of Wakanda. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe and leave a comment down below. And I hope to see you later on. Peace out.